Is Bitcoin about to breach a brand new all-time high in 2024, finally getting back above $74,000? In this video, I'm going to be promising you something here. I'm going to be giving you one of the best videos I've ever made. We're going to be going over what's to come next in terms of brand new trade setups, the order flow of what is happening right now, because this is important. We've got some early signs showing in the order flow with some divergences that I want to go over here. And on top of that, we actually, fat fun fact, rejected off the very last level that was on Bitcoin. And this is a lovely level of recent times. As you know, these daily naked point of controls held us up perfectly as support, breaching all the way up to the very last level at $73,487. That was a daily naked point of control, as you can see, ending with a wick rejection, pulling back and now getting a bit of a symmetrical triangle. So we'll be going over whether this is a symmetrical triangle for an impulse cor um, correction, another move to the downside, or actually with the divergences that we can see in the order flow are actually going to be playing out to breach a brand new all-time high sooner than expected. So it's going to be an action-packed video with so much beneficial information to you all. I just ask one thing. I promise I can help you in this video. I just need you to help me back. And that is just listen, listen carefully from the first to the very last minute. It's going to be packed with a lot of very needed, and I mean it, very crucial information that if you do not know, well, you are going to be missing out on some big profits. It's as simple as that. I want to start off giving you the context of this rise and to do that, we're going to pick up where I left off my very last video, of course. And that is where I was talking about the importance of this daily naked point of control. And I was absolutely staying in my shorts from 69,500, bearish until we saw the reaction off of this uh, daily naked point of control. I was very assertive and very confident that we will get the drop to that level. I really, really did not think that we're going to get a front run of the level. You know, I, I, I was very confident. You can go back and watch it. We will be tapping that level. We will get the drop to see the reaction. And the reaction actually was very perfect indeed. As you can see, we come down, we got a little bit of a fake out rise to change market structure, taking out the last lower highs. And then we actually come down for a retest once more of that level <laughs> before giving us this perfect perfect bounce to the upside. I actually want to bring it back one step further from my last video and give you a reminder, if anything, of remember when we were looking up here at 69,500 and we had that rising wedge going on and I was talking about the importance of 69,500? Well, let's just go back and I just want to play you this five second clip because in this free YouTube live stream, I gave you the exact high, exact glow to what was happening next. Just listen to this as we remind ourselves. If we got something like this, wow, you're going to be absolutely blessed because that could give that very nice long trade opportunity, actually. Are we going to get up to 69K? We'll wait and see. But that is a very nice level. But again, this is, as I was saying, and that was very, very key because as you can see, what we were talking about to rise to 69,500 as our key resistance. To pull back, my friends, look at that, to $65,712, the daily naked point of control, to give us a rise to the upside. Come on, give a round of applause as we hit 69,500. We pulled back to the daily naked point of control. We even got a bit of a retest, <laughs> to be fair, before a massive rise to the upside. So that prediction that I gave you gave you the exact high, the exact low, and that continuation to the upside. 69,500, back down to 65,700, continuation to the upside. Uh, obviously, I was talking through all my levels of intuition that made me believe that we're not going to get the bounce off the local anger view up, the CC, the weekly naked point of control and the daily. That was correct. We come back down. We grabbed more liquidity before giving us this wonderful impulse to the upside. So a few things that I want to really mention here that are key that can help you absolutely for sure. Point number one is that that understanding of why we needed to come down to lower levels. So as I was, you know, I've talked about this a lot. We've done some YouTube shorts, but just to emphasize it one final time, how a lot of people would have been baited in to be longing early on the daily, on the weekly naked point of control at around 67,300. That's where a lot of people would have been looking for their longs. 
course, I was recognizing why we will go down through that level based off of the reaction that we had at 69,500. Very key, very important level. And if we are to get a big rise to the upside, we need to come down and get some lower liquidity first. And that made a lot more sense off of the overall uptrend anchored VWAP on, of course, a little bit of a fake out of that daily naked point of control, 65,700. That was what was absolutely key at anchored VWAP as well of the overall uptrend. I want to go one step further and explain one final level of confluence that made it all come together perfectly. Here on the 23rd, you can see that's when we put in the low. What else happened on the 23rd of October? Do you know? Well, if you don't, you're not in the Champions membership because we were explaining what was happening right on that time. And it was actually the NQ and the ES. They hit some crucial support levels. The ES hit its uptrend anchored VWAP too. And the NQ coming into a level which I had given as a very important support earlier in the week. So we were looking for this pullback on the NQ <laughs> into what was a laddered entry long, by the way. So you have entry number one, entry number two, entry number three, entry number four, entry number five. And as you can actually see here, uh, 20,081 was the level that we actually had that final, you know, for the placement of the placeholder. I just find this interesting because as you can see, 20,081, the actual low on the NQ, when we flip back over to it, <laughs> 20,000 on the top left you can see there 20,079 so it actually came into our alerts absolutely perfectly but yeah this was back on the 23rd so we had that plan play out of the pullback into support on the NQ for the bounce and the same on the ES coming back into that all important anchored VWAP and both of those assets both of those assets the NQ perfect bounce and the ES well Obviously, at the time, we didn't know whether it would end in a perfect bounce or not. But both of them, you know, a few days later, we can see the NQ giving the most perfect bounce <laughs> the following day. The ES the same. And as you can see today, that NQ, absolute, <laughs> off of that absolute low, big, big, big bounce to the upside. The ES, not quite as much of a bounce, but nevertheless, the 23rd still gave the low. So why am I mentioning this? It's about correlations. So Bitcoin was pulling back, as was the ES and the NQ. OK, on the afternoon of the 23rd. And that's why we were sp still expecting lower on Bitcoin. And then on the Wednesday night evening is when the NQ hit our support, the ES hit our support. And most importantly, Bitcoin come back down and hit that daily naked point of control at 65,700. That's where it all came together. Our correlated markets in the stock market, Bitcoin in terms of its pullback to our important support level, all of it you know, gel together. And that's what we're looking for in trading. We're looking for these strong levels of confluence and correlated markets all together. And from that point, you know, there's a pretty simple saying we were looking for 70,000. We got the reclaim. You know, it's just simple stuff. After this, there's no weakness, only strength on Bitcoin saying it for the past, you know, few days here. There's just nothing else to do to expect other than the new all time highs, right? You've got to be looking for that. And of course, we got very close as mentioned at the start of this video, we're ever so slightly shy of a new all-time high, actually, by about 0.3%. And what is our holding us down? It is, once again, another daily naked point of control. And these daily naked point of controls, you can see the respect they have, once again, giving us the low with the correlated markets before a little bit of a retest, holding up the higher lows, holding up the higher lows, hitting that daily naked point of control and this anchored view up of the uptrend. This time you can see zero closes below. Big wicks to show the support before a lovely, lovely big move to the upside. And that is why I always place a lot of importance on this uptrend anchored view up. Just a massive level that you've got to be aware of. So uh, with that, I want to talk about the order flow. First of all, I hope that you've all understood the thought process, how it was, um, you know, absolutely crucial to not long early, to not get baited in, to wait for the support level. As I mentioned in that video, you heard my, my saying, it is a blessing, a blessing to be given that entry and that entry you were given a week in advance calling the exact high and exact low of the move for the bounce. If you pay attention to my videos, profits can be had. And I want to emphasize this in the greatest way possible. With the World Series of Trading, we have the number one trader in the world in a two-week competition has made $17 million of profit. 17 million US dollars of profit, number one in the world, chart champions. How about that? 
That is insane. <laughs> that is wonderful to see. And of course, very proud, very happy. This is what we do. We teach people the skills needed. We go over the best trading plans ahead of time so you can be making insane amount of profits like this is wonderful to see and i mean go check for yourself the leaderboard is a public leaderboard uh individual trading profit number one in the world chart champions guy 17 million dollars of profit in two weeks of trading. That is what is possible <laughs> when you're inside the champions. But you can see across our team, people doing very well indeed. In terms of percentage gains, I have two accounts in the top 10. One account with a 100% gain, another account with a 112% gain. All the accounts I entered with <laughs> in profits. Uh, so not too bad. I'm very proud to see that, but more proud to see the members, right? Champion members, 700%, 200%. But you see page after page, a lot of people do Doing very well indeed and you know whether I made a tweet right whether it's 17 million dollars of profit or 17 dollars of profit profit is profit I'm happy to see a lot of people being very successful in this competition and myself the captain leading the way in the top 10 two accounts with over a hundred percent gains on both of those accounts so you know what we're teaching here this is just to emphasize you know this is real. This is it. You know, there is so many fake traders. You've seen it. I've experienced it. Unfortunately, there is scammers out there. Uh, even I've been scammed by people. It's it's insane how how real they can make themselves look. But guess what? There's one thing they can't do, and it's appear in these competitions. It's get on the leaderboards. It's prove their results. Show account history, PLs, everything that I can do, everything that we are doing. And look at that: seventeen million dollars of profit in two weeks. Just shout out uh, to uh, to to the champions. Like that is wonderful to see. And, and well done, everybody in the World Series of Trading. You can pat yourselves on the back with those profits. Very honestly, very nice to see. And I, and I am. I'm truly proud of you. So uh, with that said, as I said, I will go on to is the lower term time frame. Now we can see what we're talking about is absolutely working. So the order flow, what have we got going on here? So we've rejected off of our daily naked point of control, right? Now we're forming a little bit of a range within this range, which we can view as a little bit of a triangle. Again, I will not say this is a perfect triangle, but I will nevertheless say it is a bit of a what I call triangle type price action. So whether you view it as a descending type of triangle or whether you view it as a little bit of a symmetrical triangle forming, Nevertheless, you can understand that this is a little bit of consolidation. So we've had a, oh, a very, very big move to the upside after the retest of that daily naked point of control. 65712. Remember that level. <laughs> I hope you did. Uh, because after that, it was just full blown upside to nearly new all time highs, 0.3% uh, away from it. But now within this consolidation, we actually have a little bit of bullish divergences forming. Uh, what, how do we recognize that? Price is making higher lows here. The CVD is making lower lows. So what this tells us is we've got a lot of market orders coming in to uh, attempt to bring price down, whether this is longs closing or shorts opening. We can see that there is some attempts at downwards movement with market orders, but you've actually got limit orders. People are absorbing those sales and they're actually holding it up with limit buy orders. So that that from face value is classed as bullish. This is classed as bullish divergences when you hold higher lows and the CVD is making lower lows. Okay, so this within the order flow would make us lean bullish because this is bullish divergences. We can go one step further and start to see the open interest increases. Though. Where are they coming from? Are the open interest increases on the bullish side or the bearish side? We can actually see uh, 4.8 million. So the, I'm going to cover the biggest open interest increases here. So we can see here an in delta increase. So you see on the bottom bottom right here, we got the delta. The delta of this candle coming in at $4.8 million. Uh, then we got another large increase here, 2.8, another 5 million. These are all positive um, delta candles. We got a little bit of short center in here with minor negative 2.3 million. Another 4 million, another 2.4 million, again, a minor uh, amount of shorts and then here are about 1 million shorts. So overall, although we are seeing bullish divergences, it's actually formed by a lot of longs closing, taking profits. The open interest increases within this range are, are you know, weighted more towards uh, longs opening. So this is where I view order flow and I say, yes, we've got bullish divergences, but the 
open interest increases in the delta is what we need to pay attention to. So what that means for me is I wouldn't want to be trading off of those bullish divergences. That's where I need to say to myself, okay, I need to wait actually now for a little bit of a bigger pullback for a new long trade. So where can we be looking at here? Well, first of all, <laughs> uptrend anchored view app. Well, we can pull it from two places, from where it got very impulsive or the overall low of the move. Both are acceptable. And you can see both are actually very um, weighted to the downside. Let's just say that it would be giving us a more of a move of that's our move to the downside, consolidation, impulse, correct, cor correction, looking for another move to the downside. We have this liquidity sat here at 70,700, which would be liquidity layer number one. But in terms of our support, that's all the way back down at $69,000, okay, with our uptrend anchored VWAP, which is my go-to tool of recent times, <laughs> if you don't know. I've talked about it a lot. And so this is giving you what I class now as a fairly difficult situation. So it requires patience, have a guess. It requires patience. So you got the bullish divergences in here, which is giving you the, the difficult idea because the bullish divergences you you know you would expect to play out and just simply look for a further continuation to the upside. But the way that the open interest is forming makes me a little bit hesitant to want to trade solely off of the order flow. Again, you have no confluence here, and that's where it comes down to. Where is your confluence sat? And where you are here at 72,100, you have order flow bullish, but in terms of the CVD divergence, but you don't have the delta, you don't have the you don't have the open interest lining up so nicely, and you have no actual higher term time frame levels of confluence. So that for me is where I would say I would at least hesitate, and that's what I'm doing. I have not longed up here, and I am not interested in the long here. I would wait patiently, and again. This is where you have to make your team your decision as a trader. And uh, if you are unable to make these decisions so well, come across to Chart Champions, come across to Team, Team CC, Team CC. I will be helping you. I'll be giving you insights, of course, as it's happening. But my thought process here is not a long trade right now. Again, if the bullish divergences play out and it pumps from here, I will miss a new long trade today. Well, not not going to be that bad, but I would miss the long trade. So for me to get involved, I will need to see a larger pullback. It could be simply to the one-to-one -one here, which is going to be coming in right now, 71,200. But I think we got a few key levels. And again, this is where you place an alert and trade a reaction. Got the one-to-one, 71,200. The liquidity, though, comes in at 70,200. But the anchored VWAP, which is our big, big, big level, is all the way back down at 69,200. So that is where we're going to start then looking at the previous range point of controls and value area highs, right? So you can see if we are to get a large pullback, which I'm not saying as of yet is going to be happening. Again, we got to monitor, you know, <laughs> trading, of course, it's about... The, uh, one thing I want to say here, trading, is trading about predicting or is trading about reacting? Well, we could say it's a little bit of both, right? It's always lovely to have the magic lines and have them play out perfectly. Now, the predictions are good when you know what you're doing. But what's more important are the reactions. Because I know if we had reclaimed and hold it above 69,500 here, I wouldn't have taken the short, okay? Because there would have been no bearish reaction. Just the same as support. If you do not get the reactions at support, yeah, the predictions are nice, but you don't need to trade those predictions. So what I'm saying here is, I can understand, I can look for drops to the downside, but if there is no reaction, if there is no breakdown, then it, then you do not need to be looking at such levels. So I, I hope you can understand that, the difference between predicting, but actually then reacting to when it comes to taking those trades. So I would say in terms of a bigger drop to the downside, where I'd be comfortable getting into new longs, it's going to be back on that previous range value area high zone, right? That's all the way back at 68,500. That would be a very big move to the downside, previous range point of control 67,700. And my, my worry here is, would be the amount of weakness is very large. So the only thing that I can do at this moment in time is remain patient. Why? Because I'm not comfortable taking the long here with the way the order flow is looking in terms of the open interest and the delta. Thus, I will remain you know, on the side here. I have longs from lower, so, you know, <laughs> I'm not that worried if we do continue it up without a new long today because I have my longs from lower. But what I will say is I would not long here. I would wait for a larger pullback. 
And that's just my comfortable style of trading. Would wait for a larger pullback, at least into the uptrend anchored VWAP. Again, you could get aggressive on the scope trades, as I mentioned, at the one to one of the liquidity. They are levels with such a volatile environment where you can get those, you know, continuation moves to new all time highs. But where I would get comfortable is looking for the deeper pullbacks. But one thing I want to emphasize one final time is for me on that deeper pullback, the context is going to be leaning more bearish. Thus, the volume, the order flow, the delta into those levels is just crucial and it really is and this is where it comes to reacting because you cannot predict order flow you can only trade the order flow as it's coming in live in the time because you do not you're, you're unable to predict volume right you do not know how much volume is going to come in at a certain level thus you can only react to that so what you can do is place your alerts at these key levels that i've mentioned and then when the alerts go off come over to your order flow software be it atus quant power exo Look at it. What's the volume doing? What is the how many orders are you seeing placed here? So I like to use this template. OK, so how many wrecked candles, the volume at the level, the delta, the CVD. And I like to combine with this with the trade counts. You can see here we got the trade counts and the time. This is useful when you're looking at the trade counts and time down here in the bottom right to understand whether the orders are coming in. Are they from big, big, large orders with a low trade count? Or is it just filled up with a high volume candle, but with hundreds and thousands of, of trade counts? So thus, it's just a load of smaller players. You know, this is what you this is where you get a little bit of an edge in the market, right? Reading the order flow. But as mentioned, you cannot predict order flow. You have to react to it. If you struggle with reacting to that or if you do not understand it, well, of course, as I mentioned, Team CC, Chart Champions, we are going to help you every step of the way. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit excited. But yeah, we'll help you every step of the way to bring it serious, right? Uh, whether it's giving you updates in the discourse, you know, reminding you of key levels, whether it's just giving you guidance of, you know, what I'm expecting next, or, of course, sharing with you the pinpoint accuracy of the levels, uh, insights into intuition of why I wouldn't long key levels, why I'd wait for larger pullbacks. Of course, all of this played out perfectly. Um, you know, that's what you get within the group. So I would say if you want to learn... <laughs> I hope it's been clear, but you really need to get over to Chart Champions. <laughs> we are uh, doing very well in the World Series of Trading. We got the biggest profit, guys, in the world. You know, this is the home of trading. It's as simple as that, the home of trading. Biggest traders, best traders, best predictions, best trades on Bitcoin, on altcoins. And, you know, myself publicly displaying that coming in with over 100% gains in the competition. Okay. And this over the past uh, two weeks, I've actually been using uh, zero leverage. So I've, I removed the leverage after I started to do well and just it gained my account just slowly and steady for around 8%. So yeah, <laughs> that's the way I've been doing it. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope it's made sense what we're looking at here. So can we breach all time highs? Of course, yes. But first, I personally, for a new long, will be waiting for a larger pullback. We rejected off of the last daily naked point of control on the chart, which is funny. I do absolutely feel we can breach new all-time highs. Don't get me wrong. Okay, I'm not bearish. I'm just not willing to long yet. And that is honestly the science of a good trader, recognizing when to be involved, when to step back, and when to execute on those trades. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's made sense. If you want more head over to chartchampions.com. We'll be happy to have you there, help you each step of the way. It's a very friendly, loving community that has improved leaps and bounds over the past 12 months. If you're an old member, you're going to be you're going to be shocked of how much more professional and helpful everybody is from the ground up. Everybody is super, super uh, wanting everybody to succeed. I, I know you're going to love it. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. Have a good day. Hope you succeed in your trades. And if you want more from me, you know where to get it over at chartchampions.com. Thank you ever so much. Hope you've enjoyed. And yeah, it will just end by appreciating once more that, that prediction that I gave for free over here on YouTube. Very nice. Thank you ever so much. That's me signing out. Goodbye.